Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with me for Saturday's Daily Bible Study coming from Charlie's Outreach Ministries. We have a great and wonderful lesson. Jerusalem in trouble. Jerusalem in trouble. Came from 2 Kings 18, verses 17 to 37. Okay, Friday's and Saturday's lesson is kind of lengthy, but we're going to move right into it and try to and get uh, make sure that we get it taken care of as swiftly as possible, but uh, make sure we get a good uh, meaning and understanding out of what the lesson is t is telling us and reminding us of. Amen. We're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first I want to ask if anything you said touches your heart, soul, or spirit, or you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would, subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to get ready and go into lesson, but we're going to have prayer first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into no temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for making a way out of nowhere and lead us and guide us in your true path of righteousness, Father. Lord, we thank you for touching, healing, and guiding, and strengthening, and protecting all those under the sound of my voice. And whenever this is here, Father, you say by in your in your word, Father, by your stripes we are healed, and we claim healing, protection, guidance, and leading in the mighty name of Jesus. And through your grace of us, we shall forever give you the glory and the praise, Father, and we shall give testimony of what you is doing, have done, and shall do in each of our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All righty. We're going to move right into our lesson. As I stated, this is a Lengthly lesson as as Friday's was, Amen. Um, Jerusalem in trouble, Amen. Jerusalem was in trouble. Uh, Judah uh, was in trouble as well, but Jerusalem was was uh, not able to uh, make it uh, out like uh, Judah did, Amen. Second King eighteen seventeen to thirty seven verses seventeen through nineteen says, and the king of Assyria sent the Tartran, the Rabsarais, and the Rabshakar with a great army from Lekosh to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they came and stood by the conduit of, of, the, pool, of the upper pool, which is on the way, on the highway to the washer's field. And when they called for the king, there came out to them Il Elakim, the son of Hilkah, who was over the household, and Shibna, the secretary, and jo Joah, the son of Asphar, the recorder. And the Rishkah said to them, Say to Hezekiah, thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest this trust of yours? As we see, Hezekiah then began to fortify Jerusalem, Second Chronicles 32 and 5. Perhaps it was news of this that caused the king of Assyria at a later date to dispatch his army officials to Jerusalem demanding unconditional surrender. The uh, three Jewish officials went out to meet the Assyrian emissaries and to hear their demands. The NIV renders the term as supreme commander, chief officer, and field commander. And the uh, New King James Version labels these officials by their original military titles. These are terms, these terms are not proper names. Amen. Verse 20 to 25 says, do you think that mere words are strategy and power and power for war in whom you do who, in whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me behold you are trusted now in Egypt that broken reed of a staff which will p 
pierce the hand of any man who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places the altars and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you are able to, on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my, ser my master's servants when you trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, is it without the Lord that I have come up against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. As we see, uh, the Repshka spoke insultingly to them in their own Hebrew language, a uh, uh, Judean tongue. First, he mocked Hezekiah's uh, trust in the fornications and the fortifications of Jerusalem. Then he revealed his knowledge that Hezekiah had sought the help of Egypt against Assyria and, and ridiculed Egypt as a broken reed, talking about how inadequate and ill-equipped Egypt was in verse 21. Third, he said to Judah, could not you uh, that Judah could not trust <clears throat> in the Lord because Hezekiah had destroyed all the high places and altars. Rish, Rish, Radish, Rabshakeh did not realize, though, that these were heathen shrines and not places where the Lord was worshipped. These were places that Hezekiah needed to get rid of. Next, the suggested he suggested a bet. He would give 2,000 horses to Judah if Hezekiah could find that number of horsemen. Judah did not have that many cavalrymen. He taunted and so had to depend and so had to depend on Egypt for chariots and horsemen. Uh, Hezekiah and them did not have all these things. They was inadequate in those in those uh, 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 um, the the horse the men's and the horses and chariots and all those kinds of. They didn't have those type of things. So finally, the, the Rabshakeh claimed that the Lord had sent Assyria to destroy Judah. He go even loud on God and said, God has sent him to do this. Amen. Verse twenty six and twenty seven say, Then Elikam the son of Hilkai and Shebna and Joah said to the Rebshah, please speak to your servants in the Aramaic, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. Well, they probably shouldn't have said all that because uh, they, they knew that they didn't want the people on the wall, the, the workers on the wall that probably didn't know the, all the different languages to hear what they had to say. Uh, he should have just said, don't speak to us in that language. He said, but the Rebshah Rabshaka said to them, has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you and not to the men sitting on the wall who are doomed with, with you to eat their own dung and to drink their own urine? So they're going to be in such a bad shape that they're going to drink their, they, they're gonna drink their own urine and, 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 and eat their own poop. Amen. They really thinking they're going to do some damage to them. Amen. But as we see, the Jewish officials quickly suggested to Rabshakeh that all further discussion be carried out only in the Aramaic tongue, the language of diplomacy, rather than in Hebrew language, which all the people that was on the wall and stuff would have known. They were secretly fearful that such a arrogant talk might be destructive to the moral of the Jewish people listening on the wall. But the rapture could, could uh, uh, counter that he wanted the people to hear and understand their coming starvation and doom. Amen. Verses uh, 28 through uh, 37 says, then the rapture God stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, hear the word of the great king of the king of uh, 
of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, he, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord by saying, the Lord will surely deliver us, and this uh, city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Then each one of you will eat of his own vine and each one of, you, of his own fig tree. And each one of you will drink the water of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of, of bread and vineyards a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. And do not listen to Hezekiah when he uh, misleads you by saying, the Lord will deliver us. As any of, has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land, out of, his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arapan? Where, <clears throat> where are the gods of... Uh, Sephiram and Hana and Iva, have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their lands out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But the people were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command, command was, do not answer him. Then Elikim, the son of Hilkah, who was over the household, and Shibna, and the secretary, and Jonah, the son of Asra, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him words of the Rabshakeh. Amen. Uh, this here kind of is, is going backwards, uh, uh, but this here is... <clears throat> You know, we spoke of that God killed 185,000. Well, this is kind of like before all this occurred, and they uh, uh, was told uh, uh, by the rapture God that, they, you know, they were going to destroy them and how no account they was and what they God couldn't do and all this kind of stuff. But now, he, uh, uh, and now they said uh, uh, they are going back to Hezekiah to tell him because they came out to hear well, you know, the king didn't go out to here. The, he sent his his his, his, uh, his 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 the people that's under him, like the president was sending the governor and the senator and all that to go out and listen. Well, they he sent those out, and now as they come back to tell him what they are all distraught about what is said. And man, they were saying that the people on the wall are gonna be distraught. Well, they was just as distraught. Amen. And they are addressing the people directly. The wretch has warned them not to let Hezekiah deceive them into trusting in the Lord for deliverance. If they would surrender, they would be granted the privilege of living in Jerusalem temporarily. Amen. Then when the king of Assyria returned from the Egyptian campaign, he would take them to Assyria, a land like your own. No other tribal deities had been able to deliver nations from Assyria. How could they expect their God to do it? Well, because they served a living God, amen. The people on the wall remained silent while the three Jewish officials returned to Hezekiah thoroughly disheartened. They were thoroughly, they, they was upheaved, they were scared they, because of what had been said to them, but yet and still they, were, they did not uh, let them know that they were in such straits of are so upset about what had been said because the king had told him, you say nothing. You get the message and you bring it back to me and that's it. You don't reply nothing. You don't give no answers for nothing. Amen. So as they, as the best thing was for them to do so. But when they got back, they just tore up their clothes and everything saying, oh, they're going to tear us to pieces. They're going to kill us. Amen. And as I said, this is kind of like it goes backwards because this is a... Uh, <clears throat> Saturday's lesson, and we know Friday lesson was telling us that that uh, uh, God uh, destroyed. He got rid of one hundred eighty five thousand overnight with nothing happening. No, no, no wars went out. No, no, no arrows were sent off. No, 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 no swords were swung. 
they, the angel of the Lord went out and destroyed 185, boom, just like that. One angel, not angels, one angel went out and destroyed 185,000. So it's a powerful lesson as we're uh, uh, looking back at, 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 at uh, how the people were feeling coming up to the point of what had, what had been said. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson. Have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.